Bruce Dumont back in Chicago. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, during the break, we were talking about uh, uh, the uh, the black vote and where it might go, and uh, I brought up the question to Salim about what about these efforts by the Trump administration to reach out uh, to the black community. They're having 15 centers all over the United States in urban areas where there's going to be an outreach program, an active outreach program, to try to get African Americans to uh, support Donald Trump. And uh, as someone who has uh, your uh, hand on the pulse of what happens in, in at least black Chicago, uh, uh, how much of a serious effort is that, Salim? Serious effort? Uh, it, it is a serious effort. There are, there are many people who do support Donald Trump. There has been support for Trump in the black community for, for a while. Uh, many people are attracted to his alpha dog persona, his braggadocio. In, in fact, in the hip hop community, you know, that, that's a part of the, the, the uh, aesthetic of, of mm -hmm. hip hop, this braggadocio thing. And Trump um, emblemized that for, for many folks. I mean, many of the lyrics in hip hop uh, music uh, refer to to Donald Trump because of that in a positive way, in a positive way, or or at least in an, an ad, you know, in in a, in a way that is a, they, they admire his his uh, his posture, the way he presents himself. Um, so there is this residual affection for Donald Trump in the community, but I think by and large the black community is anti-Trump, especially the activists, mm -hmm. the black activist community. They're anti-Trump. Uh, is a significant it, residue. Is it? Older black uh, voters, where anti-Trump, anti-Trump, anti -Trump. Okay. yeah. They, they, so it's the mid, uh, middle range, black uh, young, younger, class? younger black, younger black voters, especially the men, uh, younger black males, see they, they see some attraction in, in Trump's. Um, and and one one other follow-up question, because we talked about this last last uh, segment, what is it about the campaign of Kamala Harris and? Uh, uh, Cory Booker that gave them less than stellar both, both support of them, within the black community. Both of them seem inauthentic. Uh, Cory Booker seemed inauthentic, um, and and that, you know, that, that is a part of that was a part of his problem when he was running in in Newark, New Jersey. I mean, a lot of the black community in Newark initially rejected Cory Booker for Sharp James, the the, the mayor who had a more um, earthy appeal, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and and so he he always came across as someone who was. Who's putting on airs, so to speak? He's making it up. Like he's making it up, right? The T-bone thing. We <laughs> made up his friend T-bone. <laughs> what the heck, T-bone? And Kamala uh, Harris, the drug dealer, who's and he was tough, and I was tough, and yeah, we yeah, worked that together. Thing. That Come thing. on, yeah. man. Exactly. That, and like Kamala that. Harris, you know, she was an, an Indian Jamaican who was who was trying to be black. Uh, and that's a prosecutor. A lot of and the prosecutor. And the prosecutor, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people found that. Um, not, they didn't find that alluring at all in, in the black community. Some did. A lot, a lot of people did like her, but um, overall, she didn't. She didn't strike. And that what about chord. Bernie? Bernie is having a hard time in the black and community. And why? Um, I, I think a lot well, of it is authentic. He's uh, very authentic. Very uh, and and there are, there's a significant slice of the black community that's very very fervently uh, behind uh, Bernie right. uh, because of that uh, that uh, authenticity. But at the same time, I think it's you know there's a cultural distance there. His his Jewishness, his um, East Coast. Uh, what what? Yeah yeah. There's, there's a there little something <laughs> that goes back to the history in the '60s. Yeah yeah. There's a little, there's there's a little bit of that. You've got uh, people on the uh, the Freedom Riders. You got people marching, and then you have these white kids from Winnetka, uh, Winnetka telling them what to do. Kind of I remember that. when they tried that with Harold. So when I go, we all go back to that. The white kids, the woke white kids then yeah. tried to tell Harold Washington what to do, and Bobby Starks and uh, Conrad, Conrad Worrell, Worrell and the Nationalists stepped in and blew that thing right. up, and that dynamic still seems exactly. to be Exactly. That's, exact, that's the exact dynamic that I'm but, talking but about. But I, I have to stick. Some, some of the, the Jewish Americans at that time also went down South and we're registering people oh, to vote Jews. and risk and, and a few of them lost not, their lives. The Jews I'm have been the most. No, 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 no. I know. I'm just, I'm just saying that, that you know they, they mm -hmm. weren't just ordering everyone around or something. No, you know, no, they, no. They, that's they, true. They, that is they, true. They, they marched and they registered. There is an, there is antagonism there, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it and it goes back. And I think it's that's a part of the the uh, um, the client. Uh, how come we never? How come we never hear about? Because the media that won't discussed want to in talk the media, or or, or 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 I, I understand them. they don't want, but but is is part of this 
story, the, 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 the black Jewish relations, which goes back to uh, Harold Washington's election in 60s, 1983. Even before 60s before that. that. And, and uh, uh, Mark Clark and, and um, yeah. Black Panther uh, mm -hmm. folks and Bobby Rush. Is, it be, is this a unique Chicago story? No. No, no. They, it's all uh, over I'll the tell you where it uh, was first manifest in a national way was in uh, Brownsville in mm. uh, New York. Uh, when th there was unanimity around uh, going through the mid 60s around de jure equality. As soon as you uh, getting voting rights, housing rights, anybody can go to a hotel. People don't remember that there were hotels in major cities that wouldn't accept blacks, wouldn't accept Jews. Uh, some of these hotels. And, uh, of course, this was true of private clubs and so forth. But when you move beyond that, you began to get divergence of interest with some people saying, well, look, uh, we're a large portion of the city, but we're not, uh, we, we don't have enough uh, spots in the, uh, among the teachers. We don't have enough spots in CCNY. Mm. We don't have, and all of this came at How much time did the, you spend in New York? Uh, huh? How much time did you spend in New York? You, 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 you're mentioning the, these initials are, yeah. are uh, you know, comfortable initials. You, you, you seem comfortable. No, no. Uh, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi <laughs> is the uh, epicenter of mm. Jewish life in America, I think we all know. <laughs> and New York is a small outpost. Um, yeah. So naturally, I, I've Definitely gone there a little there, bit. Charles. But, uh, <laughs> but the okay. fact is, I think what happened <clears throat> in, uh, after you moved from legal equality is you begin to get interest group politics. Some people then who are white, Jewish, but they could be Episcopal, are going to say it's a social justice issue and we're going to make common cause. Others are going to say, look, uh, it's a merit-based issue or, you, you know. And is it, but is it more than just um, African Americans wanted uh, racial preferences and Jews who were victims of quotas forever didn't want them. There's something else there. I don't know what it is yet, well, but I'll no, write but about it. Okay, Bruce, I'll figure it out. There may, be, there may be some tension there, but I think um, m much of the, the theoretical assaults on, on the idea of, of uh, un, uh, this, this inequality really was pioneered by Jewish intellectuals and whatnot. They were the ones who were, who were forming the, the uh, in, you know, that, that, yeah. that and now yes. the big, and now it's the, Asian yes, Americans. Oh, is, 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 oh, is, part of the, is part of the appeal, uh, uh, Salim, the, the appeal that Trump might have to some small section of, of uh, black uh, voters that you talk with, is it because of his strength uh, about building the wall? I mean, how do blacks who you run into, mm -hmm. how do they react to the on, on, uh, influx of, uh, of Central Americans uh, through our southern border? Uh, that that's another uh, that's another issue that that um, attracts Trump to to a lot of African Americans. <clears throat> they also are wary of this of this kind of open uh, immigration idea uh, because they they feel that they suffer <clears throat> from that. When and and it's an old labor um, idea as well. It's an old labor position that it, if you if you make immigration unlimited, it lowers the currency of labor. Used to be Bernie's, Bernie's, Bernie's position. Bernie Sanders used to be. Used to have Bernie. Bernie. Back Sanders shortly used to from have Chicago with more discussion. back in Chicago. Let's uh, head west to Austin, Texas. Uh, Roger's listening to us on KLBJ, and they've got a big uh, uh, primary coming up on Tuesday. How are you doing, Roger? We're doing very good. Thank you for having me on, sir. You want to yeah, give me a little, uh, you want to give us a little preview of what you think is going to happen in the Democratic primary? You may not be a Democrat, but I'm sure you've been following the news down there. Uh, who do you think is likely to win uh, on Tuesday night? 
Well, I'm in Travis County, so uh, high Democratic turnout, and it's probably Sanders will win by a considerable margin here. Okay. Uh, you know, that's just the way the chips fall. Is that Austin? You know? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Um, uh, and, Salim, you, you, you were very, uh, very articulate on what you were saying about the investment of the uh, older activist black community uh, into the Democratic Party. Uh, and, and your characterization of the presidential uh, candidates was also extremely spot on. Mm. You know, I heard Buttigieg's uh, exodus speech and, and Steyer's, and Buttigieg says, we can't take four more years of Trump. And Steyer said, we can't have any more of these disasters. And it made me wonder, what disasters are they talking about? You know, we've had the tax reform, uh, reduced regulation. Uh, our military's been rebuilt. The we Tom Steyer presidential campaign people. was a disaster. Yeah, the, it was a disaster. And, you know, the, the, the thing is that the Trump's got such a track record of achievements here that, I mean, it's almost surreal to hear these guys try to run on this is a disaster. I think that you got it exactly right. I should say that I love going down to Austin. I have two adult children who live uh, in Austin, and I and uh, nothing beats the barbecue down there. Sixth Street, right? Sixth Street is that? Sixth Street, but also uh, the barbecue, which is really brisket down there. It's a lot of fun. Salt Lick. I'm sure this gentleman knows Salt Lick. Yeah, yeah. But let me just say, I I think, uh, I think that Trump has a lot to run on, and not just the uh, economy, let me just, but he's let me, largely let, let, delivered let me, on what he let promised. Let me interrupt you for a second, because yeah. I think the caller agrees with you, yeah. but Michael, I know, disagrees with the caller. So, Michael, I want you to tell Roger in Austin, Texas, why he's wrong. Why he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I don't think Roger is totally wrong. I think at the break, we were kind of talking about how sometimes the media simplifies things. It's not one or the other. There are things that Donald Trump, look, I, I think Donald Trump's just an awful, uh, you know, he says the same yeah. about you. Yeah, that's it. But he has <laughs> he he's, he's done terrible. he's done some things that uh, first of all he's done things that for his base that he promised them. He did say he was going to stand up to China. Forget how I feel how he's done it. He did say he was going to, you know, build a wall and he took the money from the defense department. If you if you like those things, you do think that he has a record. If you're a corporations or even the mid-sized businesses and the tax cut work for you, then that's the record you're going to run on. But of course, this is complex. If you're a working class person in the industrial middle West who is out of a job or you're not making minimum wage, there are people that support Bernie Sanders because they've got three jobs and can't afford health care. That, you know, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's all false. Though, dude. That's that, not that false. false. That's, that's a 330 yes, it, million yes, people in this is. country. No, no, they, no, not that no. many. If you look at the statistics on even how many people have two jobs, is it, you know, the, the unemployment now is so low. In Austin here, it's 2 percent, man. Did I, I mean, not we're trying, talk about wages? We're trying to find did, people did, did, to I, work, and wages have gone up. Go look at the ELS, man. The when I go to Austin, when I go to the, Austin the, the, and, and other cities, one of the things I do is I go to, uh, like, a Burger King or a Dairy Queen, and I ask what's the entering wage, and that's the effective minimum wage. And two or three right. years ago, it was 12 bucks or more for the very it's, entering people in Austin, and now I imagine it's closer yes. to 15. In Austin. It's yes. 15. In Austin. In Austin. One, one city in Texas. Let, let, let Roger finish. All over town. Hmm? It's 15 to 20 all over town. And we're having a great economy. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to say that things are in a disaster when – our troops are coming home. We're not in a war. We've got our allies finally paying up. You know, ISIS is defeated. Look at the terrorist leaders that have been, you know, killed, whatever. You know, and, you know, what is the disaster? The Democrats have a real problem here well, because you've got weak candidates yeah. and you're running into a headwind. All right, John, John Roger, Cass has got a question for you. Roger, um, the U-Haul, if I'm going to take a U-Haul from California and come to Texas, it, it costs me a lot of money. But if I'm – how does that work? Why aren't there more people leaving Texas for California? Why are all the Californians coming to Texas? Well, maybe <laughs> – Maybe you could have uh, Bill Bergman up there come on, and he could probably explain why we have so many Illinois 
mm. U-Hauls coming to town. It's California. You know, we're a conservative, low-tax state. Everybody is leaving the craziness and trying to come here. But as when they get there, Roger, when they get there and when they get to North Carolina and when they get to Georgia, they're not – they're voting for many of the same policies yes. Yes, <laughs> in the states they the left. Yeah. Yeah. Put up a wall. They're Don't let in Illinois in Democrats into right, Texas. Yeah. They'll ruin your whole country. Can I Roger, go, oh, again, oh, go ahead. Yeah. The, the, Michael I, is upset. I, I, I'm not upset. I understand <laughs> what Roger's saying. And again, there are, it, you, it depends on the lens you're looking at this through. If, if you're a Republican who really, really has never voted Democrat, you won't give credit to Barack Obama for eight years of certain economic factors that the same Bureau of Labor statistic you're citing went up and up and up. If you're a Democrat and the rule of law is important to you, there's a lot that the, President the, Trump the, has history done. History is that, great, that, dude, but this is now and going forward. We're electing someone in the future. Let's not well, be talking about all the past. Let's talk about well, I'm today. Not, that's that's not nothing. that's not my point. You my point is nothing. my point. Well, your is point was you're going to take credit for things that Barack Obama did. No, yes, he fun, that's care. funny, Bruce. Well, he my, no, care. my point is that there's you know, if 165 million Americans didn't vote for Donald Trump, I don't think all of them think that his track record will change their mind and that that's the country is wonderful under the. I mean, it's just not realistic. You know, you you can't you can't claim that a president has done everything right. Any president. Who was well, this hope, Barack Obama that, who I was present was. during the uh, Biden administration? Well, I, well, that was also it was a horrible time because you 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 may remember 150 millions were uh, million people Americans were killed with uh, with East guns. the traffic. It years. certainly <laughs> eased the traffic. Years. But you know what, Bruce? I, and I don't gonna, notice any. I didn't notice any. You guys are making the, fun of Joe freeway. Biden, but you don't make fun of the things Trump says. It's Bruce, fascinating. It's listen, fascinating. Listen, of the things Michael, that Trump you do. Listen, yeah. you guys. This yeah, is a that, campaign uh, uh, that's going to go through all 57 right, that's, states. That's my point. <laughs> all 57. <laughs> if you want to hear from Trump, just turn on CNN. Roger, Roger, the one thing that we really like is being the, doing this show from Chicago. We like all the people in Austin, Texas, who listen to us every Sunday night on KLBJ. You're one of our oldest affiliates. We got lots of calls from Austin. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank We're now going to go to Cottonwood, California, where Dale is listening to us. Go ahead, Dale. Bruce, thank you for letting me get on. I have Good. three <laughs> thoughts, okay? All right. The first thought is I sit out in my front yard with my sheep and lambs and listen to you on Sunday nights. Second of all, the president on Thursday had a roundtable with a bunch of black leaders, Candace Owens, Diamond and Nope. So, and all these other people need nothing but praise for this president. Oh right. God. Thirdly, I want to say that the rallies that President Trump has, there are 17 to 26 percent of Democrats going to those rallies. Now, what do you think that means? It means that Michael is. Um, <laughs> we need to call 911 right now because Michael's <laughs> Michael, not doing well. <laughs> no, no, it's Iman and Silk. We're there at the White House, and I'm so I'm sure that the yeah, whole man, African American it, population will flip and and vote. Yeah, Diamond and Silk is that kind of a joke to, to most people in the black. They're community. not a joke. That but is they, ridiculous. They, they're, they're a joke. They're a joke to most most people in the black community. I, I understand why you find them funny. I, I mean, why you find them uh, compelling, but they're, they're not compelling to to most black folks. I'm what about Kanye Harris West? What about Kanye West and his support of the president? Um, really you know, he, he's lost a lot of support as well, but he's also, he's also increased the president's allure among a certain uh, group of black I folks. I think that what, the fact that we got to go through a number of different names represents something that's changed. There mm -hmm. are more sort of prominent black people people, including elected officials, Tim Scott and so forth, mm -hmm. who can speak as black Republicans. Some are just, you know, entertainers or don't mm -hmm. have any not particular many, weight. Charles. Not that many. They're not all that no, many, but it's it's more than it used to be. And I th much more. Well, not 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 much more than it than it was uh, uh, during the time of Nixon, for example. But you know, in Nixon's black well, capitalism. Deny that. Be cool, my man. Be cool. <laughs> um, <clears throat> see, you know, this is one of the things that people get so, and that's why people, you know, uh, uh, compare Bernie Bros to deplorables. It's the sim a similar kind of anger, emotionalism that gets. gets no, but what what Dale is saying is, uh, Dale is saying that there are African Americans 
who are part of this effort to support so Some. President Trump. Some. And you are an African American leader. You are a progressive. I'm not a leader. You may, but you may not it's like some of the people that support the president. But you can't deny that they don't exist. Oh, definitely. And again, and again, some of these African American leaders, they use their power. They use their influence to whisper in Derek Kushner's ear to, to help lead to the Second Chance Act. And and I know you're going to say, oh, that started with Obama. No, I'm not. I'm well, not going to say, say that. I, I, by the you way, give, I give... Do you give the president give, credit yes, for that? Yes, yes. Thank this is, you. John and I were just talking about this outside in the break. That if you can't concede that, that a, a president of, uh, that you oppose has done some good things, then you just don't have any credibility. Exactly now, right. the First exactly Step Act right. was a good thing. It was a first step. It was a small <clears> thing, <throat> but he got it passed and he deserves credit. But, but a, a, a staged event at the White House with some African-American leaders, that does not speak to, uh, not you all. know, statistically a larger, it doesn't make any sense. I'm respectfully to Dale. Yes, he, he had a little event and people shouted, you're Historically terrific, black universities that had a That's meeting at the White House and then ended up with, with hundreds of millions of dollars. Does that good. count? Is that good or bad? Great, good. great. You think some of them might support Trump? I mean, it's good. Some, it's how many? Back shortly. Actually, reminds me of... Back in Chicago, boy, uh, we should keep the tapes rolling. During <laughs> all, the, all the good right. stuff. We're going to be here until 10. We're Joining us anywhere. tonight from the progressives, we have uh, Silly Mowakil from In These Times and also uh, from WVON Radio. We have Michael Golden, who wrote the book Unlock Congress many years ago. And also we have uh, representing sort of the conservative side, we have John Cass, longtime columnist for the Chicago Tribune, and Charles Lipson from the University of Chicago. He's now the uh, uh, chairman, not chairman, uh, uh, Professor Emeritus, uh, and he is from Great with Mars. merit. That's what you know what, Bruce? Great with merit. <laughs> okay. And you know what, Bruce? <laughs> In what? your heart, you know I'm right. I do. I, do. <laughs> I've got, I think I've got a couple of posters that will say that, John. <laughs> By the way, we, we have gone uh, 90 minutes into this program, and we have not spoken about something that Donald Trump did last week, and that is America's longest war appears to be over. Now, there's a lot of people listening that may not believe that the agreement, the, the peace agreement with the Taliban will last, and it may not last, but it's something also that President uh, has said that he wanted to do uh, during his campaign. Uh, according to the deal, uh, there are currently 12,000 U.S. troops uh, in the region, and that's going to be dropped down to 8,000 troops within the next 135 days, and all American troops will be out within 14 months uh, from Afghanistan. So I want to begin. Uh, I'm going to begin with you, Charles. Um, let's talk about uh, the president's foreign policy. He hasn't gotten credit for much, but is this is somebody going to finally stand up and say, "Mr. President, you did a good job on this," or is there too much iffiness in this deal? There's too much iffiness in this deal because we don't know whether the Taliban will execute what they promised, and we don't know whether they'll uh, distance themselves from al-Qaeda, which was the reason that we went in there in the first place. Our goal there uh, was under George W. Bush was far too expansive. We now know that in this uh, tribalized, poor, mountainous community, we really can't create anything that looks like a democracy. Okay. Our interest is in keeping people there from attacking us. Okay, let's go to John Cash. John, about does the time. president get credit for this? He should. It's about time. He ran on it. Actually, Rand Paul ran on it. Yep. And uh, the Republican Party freaked out. They were okay with Trump talking about it because they thought they could handle him with Jeb Bush. Yes. And they missed it. Right. Um, like Kind of like the Democrats think they can handle Bernie Sanders. They're, they're missing it. Um, but yeah, we we shouldn't have we should go over there, take care of business, and get out. American people don't like the wars, and I was a kind of a Republican. That's why I'm amused by people saying I'm a Republican. I was more Republican when I bought the whole Colin Powell, um, George Bush, weapons of mass destruction, and I don't now. I mean, okay, we shouldn't have been there. 
the purple it's finger. Better to call, it's better to call you a conservative than a Republican. I'm a conservative. I know. But to tell me that you're going to, as Charles just said, you're going to take a cultures that have no background, nothing in a representative a republic and recreate a republic in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, you're insane. And Michael so it's about Goldman. time we're out. The uh, war is over, yeah, Michael. Well, it's not over, but I, I, on the face of it, it's a good thing to bring our troops home. I have to say, it won't be a satisfying answer, but this is one area where I don't really like to criticize presidents and where I think that American, this is one of the areas where it's important for Americans to trust their president because they see classified daily presidential briefings every day. Look, Barack Obama stayed there far longer than I thought he would, and he also you know, had drone strikes going. I think that presidents see threats in, in some of these areas and they, they don't realize before they get there that, wow, I, I don't want to, I want to bring these guys home, but there are, there are real threats on the ground here that, that right, jacket. that most people, so I don't, I don't, I don't criticize presidents about that. That's one area where I think that's why it's so important what you trust and who you elect in the presidency because they have enormous powers to protect the country. I, I always was surprised that Barack Obama didn't want to bring more homes, troops home uh, faster because he didn't like, quote, dumb wars. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and I think that he saw things that we still, you know, don't know the full measure of the threat there. Do because, you, do because you to consider, me, but Michael? one more thing, but to, to me, I never understood why do you, why do you have to get the terrorists there? Why can't they just move to another country? Mm. What's so special about that place? Mm. Hey, if you shut it, it's like whack a mole. If you shut them down there, mm -hmm. but I think the presidents uh, uh, see things in classified briefings that we don't know about. That's do you think? Do, do, do you then? Could you sleep comfortably? knowing that Bernie Sanders was the president of the United States, if he had access to all of this information, are you confident that he would act in a presidential way, not necessarily in the way that his rhetoric has been for 35 years? Oh, so that's a, that's a fair question. And by the way, I'm not a, a Bernie Sanders supporter. Uh, I think we got that. Yeah, but, but I mean, but also actually ad ad admire the guy because he's, he's actually – he, he means what he says, I believe, unlike uh, uh, you know a number of politicians. I do think that once you're in that office, um, uh, yes, I, I, if he were the, if he were president, I think he would be responsible about our military and national defense. I do. I don't, well, yeah. what's your answer to that question about Bernie Sanders? I think he would be responsible. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't I don't see any evidence that he would you know he would mishandle things. I think that our uh, our presence in Afghanistan was a mistake from the beginning. It should have been a police action, mm -hmm. a, you know, a policing action essentially, rather than uh, you know devote our entire military to that effort, because it was simply you know the Taliban were a nationalist effort to to keep Afghanistan free of this, in, in this incessant invasion phenomenon that's been happening to them for so many years. But we should also know by now that candidates who are running for office, they never have as much information as the incumbent president. That's right. Mm -hmm. They make they say things, they may mean things, right. but when they get in, they really can't. I mean, there's a long list it of captured. things that the, the long list of things that Barack Obama said that he wanted to do, like yeah. get rid of Gitmo on day 1, mm. that never happened because of political realities that he was the momentum, not Institu aware of. Institutional momentum. And that's one of the things that Bernie Sanders um, promises to change. I think the problem... You know, that institutional momentum is hard to, 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 to fight I that. think the problem that uh, Bernie Sanders would have would be, uh, first of all, he would immediately start uh, drawing down the military budgets in order to fund a variety of domestic programs. Necessary, necessary. Um, I don't think so. I think we're that we're in too many countries now. Our uh, military we're budget talking is about two massive. different things. Our military w budget is massive, Charles. I th massive. Yes, and under uh, under Obama, who did exactly that, drew it down. Uh, I think that we uh, allowed China to expand uh, in uh, threatening a whole variety of interests. I'm not talking about so putting specific. people in to places and invading, I like the idea of deterrence, and I like the idea of pressure on NATO allies to pay more. John. You see what's happening in Europe right now, after Bush and Obama, both of them, um, the mass millions of people that have left northern A Africa, Syria, et cetera, they're in um, <coughs> Turkey, they're now being let by Erdogan into Greece, mm -hmm. the Greek government has their people on the border, this is a serious thing. Serious. This is a flashpoint they could break. There's no, the borders, now, now Europe likes borders again. Hmm. 
right? We don't like them here on the Democratic Party, but they do like them in Europe. And so they're electing right wing governments to enforce that. Like right. That. Well, Some you had Merkel a let a million people in from Syria and uh, the Middle East, and now it's a really serious problem. And one of the reasons it's it, there are two big reasons. One is that um, there are. Uh, illiberal attitudes, a variety of illiberal attitudes. And the other thing is that these countries have large welfare states so that if people are not employed, they receive large payments. And the, the welfare state and open borders are simply incompatible. Well, raise your hand. Imperialism you want, coming home to Raise roots. your hand, I mean, Democratic you know, candidates, if you think that people should get free health care if they come across yeah. the border illegally. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, everybody's hand went up. Everybody's hand went up. Yeah. Michael, is that, a, is that a piece of video that you'd like to destroy? <laughs> it will be out there. I think that, I think one of the things that was Elizabeth Warren, a couple of them who said all border crossings should be decriminalized, I right. think that was a yeah. huge Nuts. political mistake when she it's when they did so that. So did Bernie Sanders. Well, I, well, Bernie Sanders wants and, all And if he's the nominee, a lot of criminals. this is what a general election I is. I think this is Joe Biden did hear. it like this, like, yeah. Right. Then, then well, that was the most he it. could do, yeah. raise it halfway. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that I, I don't think any of them would, in, in the wake of uh, coronavirus, I don't, I don't think any of them bad. would raise their hands uh, today. Uh, yeah, but the Republicans already have the video. Yeah, so I know, I know, I know. And they have video of Chuck Schumer and the others saying coming, uh, it's xenophobic to stop coming, all these flights back, from yeah, China. Yeah, coming true, back to the, 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 the coronavirus, for those that are just joining us now, we briefly talked about it earlier in the broadcast. But um, what, should, what should the Democrats, I'm going to ask the Democrats, what should they be doing to challenge the president without making it sound like they're picking on him just because he is the Republican? I, see, that's, that's a really fair question. And I, don't, I think that some of the Democrats uh, have, been, been, have made mistakes going, is being so aggressive. Even, even though I, when I watch Donald Trump in that press conference, uh, I can't believe some of the things he says. But if you're a Democratic leader, when it comes to a, an issue this serious, you're, you're elected leader, especially the party leadership, it's better to take the high road. It's, it's, sometimes it's hard to do with him, but it's better to take the high road. You can s just say there, look, there's a few things that I don't think the president should be but doing, but we all got to close ranks. This is about, li is about life and death, and, and you know, it, I think it's been politicized, both sides, did but if Michael, you're asking about the Democrats, did I think they've gone the too far. I think no, that, no, did, I, did I think Bloomberg he said... Did take a, the high road? Uh, uh, no. We'll see. We'll None see what Bloomberg says tonight. Yeah, he's more measured when he when he, tonight he'll be more measured. But I think that they should, uh, the the right policy for the Democrats, uh, just strategically, is to hold off for three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. If the Trump administration fails, that's the point at which they can speak Let for us. Work. Let them work and fund it. Right. We've got to pause. Back shortly from Chicago with one more segment. Bruce Dumont back in Chicago. Uh, one thing we have not talked about, we've talked about uh, the the coronavirus and its effect on public safety. We haven't talked about its effect on, on the stock market. Uh, it would seem to me that uh, that's the biggest fear that the president has. He doesn't say that, but I think the biggest fear he has is that the stock market continues to tumble. They were down 12% uh, last uh, week and sent everybody uh, to their heart doctor to check it out. <laughs> um, what do you think, Charles? I Is think he going to get blamed for all this? Um, I think that with the coronavirus having uh, a global economic impact, a lot of big firms who have supply, uh, who sell abroad and who have supply chains that go through foreign plants are looking at decreased earnings, some of them quite substantially decreased. The, f the stock market is a forecasting mechanism anticipating what earnings and earnings growth will be. So I think what it's saying is that it's flashing some warning lights that we hadn't seen in a long time for what could happen to the economy if this really becomes a serious pandemic. Will this prompt a discussion that more and more 
companies should bring some of their production Absolutely. back to Chicago? Michael? Absolutely. Is I don't, that the answer I here? Don't, I don't <laughs> know the answer to that question, but to, to your question about will Trump get saddled, will he get blamed, the, uh, absolutely he will. Presidents get more of the blame when the economy goes down than they deserve, and the same thing the opposite way. And, uh, and, is the media and he, doing a pro is the, is the media now, let, let's talk about the media for the time remaining. Is the media doing a good job of reporting the facts in this coronavirus, or are they doing, are they going out of their way to raise fear? John? I think that uh, in general, people are, are in my, our profession are trying to uh, report the news. Are there, are there unscrupulous actors uh, at the New York Times and the um, Washington Post? They would talk about dropping, uh, all, you know, don't be, don't be neutral. This is the Trump virus, and people are pushing it. And sometimes you see it online, uh, a little dig, like Trump says it's all a hoax, John, which is not a hoax. You realize the columnists at the Wall Street Journal and, and, and Washington Examiner, that they write columns about Democrats that way. They're the, the opinion people, it goes both. You, you oh. know, you're a, it goes are both ways. Are you actually ways. telling me about what, what an opinion columnist is? Well, I'm, <laughs> Thank I'm saying, you. You, uh, you're saying just the Washington <laughs> Post and New York Times No, I'm that? just bringing up the fact that I think that there's the, that throughout the media, it's since he was elected, there's an antipathy towards Donald Trump. It's established by study after study after study. And the conservatives felt that way about the Democratic I think, president. I but think on the media, when the media, the media. Michael, when, when, the, when <coughs> the media focuses on the fact that the vice president is now in charge of this, mm -hmm. and they give you two or three days of that, and, and they say things, they repeat things that have been said, you know, that, that Rauchy was, was muzzled. He was on television yesterday saying he was not muzzled. He was asked the question yeah, three my, times. My, my quarrel. And so, and so yeah. my question is, uh, you have Azar, who I said earlier in the program, I think is one of the best public spokesmen that I've ever seen of any administration. The guy's really good. He was on all the shows today. When you have the, the government performing, I think, in, in very positive ways, what... What difference does it make if f 10 or 15 years ago uh, Pence did something that, uh, that the media didn't like? Uh, okay, f first of all, you had me for a while there. <laughs> but, but if you're the Vice President of the United States and you've been delegated that authority and yeah. you were a governor and you did something that had anything to do with public health that was of consequence, yeah. that's fair game when you're Vice President. It just is. I agree with you that, and, I, and with John that some people in the media – see, the problem is with the question, all due respect, to say the media. The media <laughs> is millions of writers and television journalists and you can't paint them all with I one brush. Separated. TV uh, with Bruce as an exception, mostly broadcast. I don't want. I'll, I'll call the media, yeah. like TV guys, Some CNN, Some CNN, of them. Some MSNBC, of them. all that ridiculous. All of them. And then I'll talk about print. I just uh, I don't like them being I'm, in the club. I'm reminded they, of how uh, giant snowstorms are treated in all of our cities when they're <laughs> about to come in. It's oh, yeah. like Armageddon is about to mm. happen. You happened. need about three sentences to be told what, what to do, Driving and that's it. I believe me, I have television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that uh, there was an overreaction. I think the media is trying to get Trump however they can, you know, because um, he, he's got to go, and, and he's very popular, and that's the only way, you know. Right. Some of that. May not right? be able to. You, you would uh, agree, some, some of that. Some, some, right. To but I, I, but I agree that Trump gives them a lot of ammunition. The things that's he was right. saying in the beginning were absurd and, and you know, typically uh, out, of, out of the box. For and so, you know, I, that deserves criticism. I, I'm, I'm with Salim on this. The president makes it. He, he almost compels the yeah, media right. to ask certain questions and say certain things. He ta talks like no he other president. Them? He Does he trigger them? <laughs> it's part of his popularity. By the way, Bruce, is it now? Let me ask you a question, Bruce. Is now the time to buy because of the stock market? <laughs> Is now the time to buy? Larry Kudlow says, well, hey, they're right. cheap. Hey, yeah. uh, you know, right sorry, from the White House. I'm sorry I missed 3M when I found out that they're manufacturing all the masks. And by the way, <laughs> let me repeat what Secretary Azar said today. You don't need a, a mask. mask. The masks that have been produced, the first line, those first wave of masks should go to medical workers who are going to be engaging with those who may or are being tested for the coronavirus. But if you look like me, you need a mask. If you, if <laughs> are you, you telling me that, that, that the, some of us need a mask? That the two 25-pound uh, salamis 
the 20 weeks worth of food and water in my basement. Oh, that's and okay. And all the man. other stuff that you need to you protect. You got enough your ammo? Beard. Have you got enough ammo, John? Keep John. That's okay, John. That's okay. Yeah. Just forget the masks. Salami is okay. Forget the masks. Lots mustard. of beef jerky. Mm. On that note, our thanks to Salim Uwakil and Michael Golden from the progressive side this evening, John Cass and Charles Upson representing the conservative wing of the American Political Discussion Group. Uh, they have all joined us tonight. Our thanks uh, to Andrew Marshall, who has directed tonight's show, and Hector Pacheco, who has been the engineer, and he's been running the boards. I'm Bruce Dumont. Next week, we'll be back. Hope you can join us then. Until then, this is Bruce Dumont. Good night from Chicago.